Hi, I'm Tim Belcher. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome to the front door of our new house and our little nightmare of a doorbell situation. This house is about 15 years old and the previous owner invested a significant amount of money in home automation. Unfortunately, he did it at a time where home automation was very hardwired, home run, and expensive. This is his doorbell situation. He has a doorbell below that back ends to the closet to a DSL doorbell controller. And he has a video camera that also dovetails to a video system back into that doorbell controller. He spent, I have the receipts, about $7,000 to create what is today a ring doorbell, but he did it 15 years ago. None of that equipment still works. It's all failed for one reason or another. The camera is completely dry rotted. The doorbell does not work even in normal doorbell mode. So I need to replace all of this and I'm gonna do it with a ring doorbell. The problem is I'm now left with two double gang boxes here and some wire. So I've got a laser and that old saying of if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I'm just gonna use the laser to cut out a name plate or a mounting plate that covers both of these gang boxes. Maybe I'll put my name in it or something up top and a mount for the new ring doorbell. So I'm gonna retrofit this old 15 year automation with a brand new, very simple to use ring doorbell. This is how I made it. As with any project like this, it starts out with some careful measurements. The most important of which were the distance between the mounting holes at the top, the distance between the top and the bottom mounting holes, and the distance between the two gang boxes. I could figure the rest out in Affinity Designer, which is essentially a less expensive Adobe Illustrator. And nothing I'm doing here would be complicated at all in either application. I take the size of my screw holes and place them carefully along with my measurements and create some sort of virtual gang box. Then I can copy that and using the screw holes, place the second below the first at the correct measurement. And this should give me a template for them both so I can create a design. I'm including this next part simply to show you that not all design ideas are good ones. I won't go far into this, but I spent several hours chasing some large B concept I had in my mind. The idea being that I could pick a nice font for the large letter B that would cover both boxes, and then perhaps laser in some pithy phrase at the top. Sort of embarrassed as I do this voiceover of how long I actually chased this one down, but in the end it just didn't look good. The work wasn't entirely wasted though. For this, I did have to create a template for the ring mounting plate, and at least that part survived and was needed in the final design. My second concept was cleaner and more traditional, a family monogram design. I decided to create a B monogram surrounded by some sort of wreath. I needed fonts that were in effect a stencil font and I couldn't find one that I liked. This one here was a partial stencil font, which means I would have to adjust it a bit for cutting. I took the B and made it large, changed it from a font to a shape, and then cut out the top left portion of the B using a square I made from the bottom spacing. Then I can cut the middle of the B with another rectangle and add a couple of lines to make the B monogram. Then I can cut out the middle of the lines just to get back to a good stencil shape. Add the name and we have a monogram. I found a nice stencil wreath online that I could use and added it, and finally added the word welcome. And each time I added text, I'd go back and make some quick adjustments to make sure the new text was a good stencil design. I added in the hole patterns for the two gang boxes and also the ring doorbell mount, and I have a good rough draft. And I actually printed that draft primarily just to test fit the hole patterns. However, I noticed the wreath at this size, especially in the areas at the top, where the leaves are very small, were too close together, and I thought they would create weak spots or even break. 
Since I like the look, I decided to simply make the leaves just a bit smaller, simply being a figurative word. I had to select each leaf in the shape and then adjust outer lines inward a bit, then go back and select each one of the large shapes and delete them. It was a little time consuming, but little things like this make the cuts cleaner in the end. Then on to light burn, and everything here is actually a cut operation, so I can just merge each portion into one layer and set up for the cut. To minimize flashback, I place down some picture hangers to lift the acrylic off the bed. I often use them as a cheap standoff. I was trying to be careful here because this is my only piece of black acrylic I have on hand. I knew I had enough on this sheet to make a second if something went wrong, but I wanted to maximize my chances for the first attempt. Because I was trying to get this right the first time, I left the acrylic contact paper on for the cut. I usually don't do this with acrylic and have actually never had a problem. This time I thought I'd make the cut and then weed the masking off just to be safe. And this was not so fun. If I had needed to make a second, the paper was definitely coming off first. The weeding was just too tedious and it would have been fine without it. The bottom two screw holes will be covered by the ring mount, but I decided to countersink all of them just to give it a more finished look. Alright, I've tested the fit and the two holes at the top and the bottom line up perfectly with the gang boxes on the wall. I've also added some permanent outdoor vinyl to the back to give that cut out a sky blue background and I've had to make one modification, drill a hole in the middle of this to actually let the wires come through. But let's get it all up on the wall and see how it looks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and I really hope you consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. This project did give me the idea of doing some custom light switch covers for some of the kids' rooms, and I think I have a really simple idea how to do that on the laser. So stay tuned for that project in the future. All in this project took me about a day. I think I was able to quickly take a little bit of a mess by my front door and not only cover it, but add a nameplate and a mount that really looks nice. And to me it's crazy that for what this guy paid for a ring doorbell 15 years ago, I could actually buy the laser, buy the acrylic, and buy the new ring doorbell and still save money. Thanks for watching.